Welcome to the World Trade webcast, your source for news analysis and information about doing business worldwide. I'm your host, Greg Sandler, president of thinkglobal.com, the B2B network for global trade leads. Our guest today is Robert Freeman, the president of First Priority Emergency Vehicles. Today we're going to learn how First Priority, based in Manchester, New Jersey, has expanded worldwide. First Priority specializes in new and pre-owned ambulances, firefighting apparatus, and first aid command units. The company exports on a variety of chassis in both diesel and gasoline configurations, and it maintains a comprehensive parts inventory to support its vehicle sales with immediate shipment for vehicle repairs. Plus, it's conveniently located near Port Newark, New Jersey. First Priority offers one-stop shopping and will coordinate shipment to any location worldwide. So we're happy to have Bob with us. Welcome, Bob, and, and thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, for starters, uh, would you describe uh, the genesis of the company and, and talk a little bit about uh, uh, what markets you're currently in? Our business started in uh, 1988, and I have been a lifelong uh, end user provider uh, in the emergency medical and firefighting arena, having been a firefighter or an EMT since I was 15 years old. First Priority was formed in 1988 and uh, started with basically one, you know, one person as a division of a small fire equipment company in northern New Jersey. And today we have uh, 65 em employees and our sales approximate $14 million a year. So it's been quite a, quite a road to follow. When you first decided to pursue export markets, what market did you first go into? Did you did you first start with Canada or Mexico, which we often hear are the markets that are sort of the easiest to get into, or did you have an opportunity to to go into uh, other markets that maybe aren't uh, necessarily the first step for some exporters from the U.S.? You know, at that time, uh, some of our earliest opportunities and successes were actually in Russia. Uh, people looking for used ambulances in Russia. And I followed it up with a, a visit there and met some local distributors we could work through. And then through advertising, we began to get inquiries from, you know, a pretty broad specter uh, of the world. And ultimately, on a regular basis now, we do business with up to 26 countries at a time. What would you say are the top strategies that have, have really worked the best for you when it comes to expanding into international markets? So you've got to be willing to, to do some investment and research. And there's a variety of areas that you can get assistance with that. The Commerce Department, for example, has tremendous programs available for an exporter. It helps define whether you have any opportunity in a given marketplace. Just because you've got a great product, it may not fit in Vietnam. You, it may it may be a great product for a different marketplace, but th those are available. And then secondly, uh, you know, we have a great relationship with your group with Think Global that once you have a vision for the fact that you have a product with some legs, so to speak, you've got to be willing to invest some time and money in promotion. And then finally, you've got to be willing to get out from your desk and go to the country that you're seeking to do business with. This is very much, and I think all exporting is, very much a press the flesh business. And if you think you can do this business at a regular, legitimate, consistent level over the internet or uh, just just the advertising aspect, it's it's not realistic. You've got to be willing. You've got to be willing to go and create the personal relationships. One of the things you mentioned was was Vietnam, and I know from our discussions in the past that Vietnam was a particularly interesting experience for you, and that it really sort of illustrates the, some of the obstacles that can crop up in exporting. Can you talk a little bit about that? And one of the challenges is that in the automotive field. You have to have a support capability for the products that go there. So, for example, while we have Ford Ambulances as a leading brand here for us in uh, Vietnam, that doesn't mean that the local Ford dealer can support that ambulance. It may be a much different level of sophistication of engine and drivetrain. So you've got to try to enlist uh, other American supportive groups to participate with you. So for example, in uh, April, 
we are doing uh, a gold key mission to Vietnam. Uh, two of our people are going there. Uh, we have seven or eight appointments set up. We also have one whole day dedicated to the Ford uh, Asia manager will be in to, to sit with and say, if we do bring these types of vehicles to Vietnam, how can we work together to ensure that there's service and support? Because like any business, Greg, it's great to sell one or two and make a quick hit, but that's not where the opportunity is. It's the long-term repetitive sales and revenue that gives you return on your investment. What, what are the markets right now that you're the most interested in or that you see the most opportunity? What we've done this year, Greg, is we've divided our uh, focus into three uh, regions. One is Africa and the Middle East. Uh, we kind of you know, combine those. The second is South America. And the third is Asia. And we have full-time representatives assigned to each of those regions. And each month this year, we will be participating in a trade mission to one of those three regions on a regular basis. Uh, and we find that's about the most we can support at one time because it's not just a matter of sending somebody in a plane to go to Vietnam for a week. It's what's your pre-strategy, what's your research, and then what do you do with that information when you get home? So we're pretty realistic that we think we can do one of these trade missions a month. Uh, and we've been pacing ourselves that way so far this year, particularly if you can find a great trading partner there. Greg, to represent you locally, and that requires more than one visit, you know, the, uh, to get a sense that they are a legitimate and ethical trading partner. If you could just impart one nugget of wisdom to U.S. exporters or, or even, you know, would-be exporters uh, in the United States, what would that advice be? What would you suggest either as a starting point or as a, as a best practice and sort of a credo for companies that want to get into the export game? You know, Greg, you've got to make a conscious decision to commit to an export strategy. It doesn't have to be tens of millions of dollars. I mean, I'll spend that hundred dollars a million times over in terms of what we did in our first meeting in Newark. Um, but you've got to decide that exporting is an important part of your day to day opportunity. I mean, the reality is statistically, it's a no brainer. Ninety five percent of the business in the world is conducted outside the United States. So even if you own a marketplace in America, you could only potentially own 5% of the, of the market in the world. So you've got to make a decision that, that exporting is a part of your business. It doesn't have to be 100%, doesn't have to be 20%, but you've got to have some dedication to it. Always look at exporting as an incremental opportunity and be willing to make a, a rational investment in that opportunity consistent with how you do all of your business domestically. Yeah, that's terrific advice, and uh, and I think reiterating the fact that, as you said, 95% of the world's market is outside of the United States is uh, a real important take-home for anybody watching. Your market opportunities um, are outside of the U.S. borders in many cases. So, Bob, thanks uh, so much for joining us today. Uh, I think it's been uh, enlightening uh, to learn uh, about uh, how First Priority has been successful. And uh, for those of you watching, if you want to learn more about First Priority Emergency Vehicles, uh, please visit uh, the company's website, which is uh, emergencyvehiclecenter.com. And I'll repeat that, emergencyvehiclecenter.com. And for the latest schedule of upcoming Think Global webcast episodes, uh, please subscribe to us with any of the links below. You can also bookmark this page. All of our previous episodes can be found online at thinkglobal.com slash webcast. And this webcast will be available uh, on demand as well. So Bob, thank you again for joining us today. Thank you, Craig. Nice to spend some time with you. I hope, uh, I hope this is helpful information to people. Bob, thanks again. And for everyone out there, thank you for watching and we'll see